Welcome back to Weems Motor Co. It's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Stick around. So I've been reading every comment that you guys leave on the channel and I'll make sure to respond to every one of those comments also. But we've been getting tons and tons of questions about what's that cool little bike that's in the background? What's that deal with the hardtail triumph that's back there? Well, today that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about this triumph hardtail sweet little bobber that we are building for a customer. Now, typically we don't take on customer builds because I have enough projects of my own to do. And this one in particular, the guy who wanted me to build it was, uh, let's just say he was the right person for the right project. So usually, typically, whenever I take on a customer build, I ask three questions. Number one, what is your budget? Because if you don't have enough money to build something like this, I don't want to start a project and have it, you know, fall out right in the middle of it. Number two, what is your timeline? Because I am a busy person. I have a lot of things going on. Not only all the stuff we got going on with YouTube, but racing and working on my own projects as it goes. And not to mention, I am a father and a husband and I gotta take care of that, number one. Then the third question is, what are your must haves? Now these are things like, well, I want a unit construction or I want a pre-unit or I want a Harley Davidson or I want blah, 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 blah. Fill in the blank with what you would want. So if any point of those three questions are not up to my liking, I just pass on. Well, this motorcycle fit all of the bills for those three questions. Now I'm excited to be doing this bike. The engine in this motorcycle is actually a 1979 Triumph Bonneville 750. Now what's particular about this engine, he wanted it. And in 1974, Triumph transitioned from being right side shift to left side shift. So he wanted a left side shift Triumph he wanted dual carburetors, and he wanted a 750. So that's why we went with this particular engine. Outside of that, he wanted everything to be early, like the early style bikes, the old right hand shift ones. So we sourced this 1967 front loop frame. He wanted a hardtail, so we hooked up with our friends over at Lowbrow Customs, got the hardtail. And then he also really liked that slim look of the pre-unit front end. So we got a pre-unit Triumph front end up there. He liked the classic look of the original tank. So we got that. He wanted a low slimline seat. So we got that. And then in the back, he liked the really fat look of the 16 inch tire. So we laced up a Triumph hub to a 16 inch Harley Davidson wheel. Mounted that nice Firestone tire on there. We got the 21 Firestone up front, but great classic lines on this bike. However, there are some challenges when it comes to putting a right shift frame with a left foot shift engine. So let's talk about that. So typically in these earlier style frames, you would want to use that earlier style motor because the brake would be on this side of the bike, on the left hand side of the bike, because you have a left hand side brake drum in the back and you could see that this is actuated by a rod that would come down and hook into where the brake pedal was. So that was the first challenge I knew when we were gonna be facing when we were building this bike. So how to figure out how to do a cross shaft, but keep it clean, keep it looking original to what the earlier style bikes were. So this was my remedy. Knowing that we were facing that challenge, I went ahead and sourced a right foot brake foot pedal for this particular bike. Now I knew everything outside of that was gonna to have to be a custom application to be able to actuate the, the brake from the right side and actuate the rear brake on the left hand side. So what I did was I modified the rear engine plate and made a oil impregnated bronze bushing that 
connects this cross shaft going across here and is actuated over on that other side of the arm so that when you press down that pedal, it pulls those brakes in the back and we wanna make sure that it actually springs back into place as designed. So really cool little project that we did there, but there's a couple projects that we want to do on this bike. We need to mount up this eight cell anti-gravity gel fill battery. Now these things are cool because you can mount it sideways, you can mount it upside down. I mean, you can mount these things anyway because it's not particular being a gel filled battery. So we're gonna have to find where we're gonna mount this and we're gonna go ahead and take care of a couple little looks, little things that I want to modify to make this bike stand out a little bit. It's just a little accents, those little things. And the last thing is we need to get this exhaust mounted on nice and tight and proper. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna knock out those three little projects and we can continue pushing forward on this nice little Triumph bobber. So stick around. So the first little task we're gonna knock out today is has to do with these lowbrow customs hardtail. Now these are high quality, great items that actually will bolt directly onto your unit construction frame. Unit construction being 1970 through 1963. Uh, these things bolt on. You got a bolt up at the top and then down here at the bottom you have two little bolts right there. Bolts on, makes you a cool little hard tail. Something I never liked was how they did this front section here. It's just kind of they squished the metal together and it doesn't look particularly appealing to my eyes. So I'm gonna machine up, we're gonna head over to the lathe and machine up some nice little circular accoutrements that'll make it look like that this bolt is countersunk into that frame rail. So let's head over to the lathe, get some measurements and uh, start figuring out how we can make that look cool. Let's get to work. So digging through my parts piles and things, I came up with two of these really cool spacers. So the idea is to take these bolts and drill out the center of them so that these bolts actually fit through this spacer and we're gonna shape and make this bolt countersink into the spacer and then we can weld these spacers around that flattened portion of the hardtail, smoothing everything out, making it look like it's a flawless part of the hardtail, adding a little bit of cool detail to that. So we're gonna take these two little spacers I have here, chuck them up in the lathe, get them cleaned up first, and then we're gonna start drilling out the center holes so that it, the bolt will go through and start shaping these things into what we want them to be. Let's get to work. I do have to say that looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Obviously we're gonna trim that outer edges so it meets that same circumference of that nice little spacer. Then we'll weld that into place so it's a permanent part of that hardtail, giving it a little bit of detail there. So, got that done. Gonna make another one for the opposite side but we're not gonna bore you with that. So the customer on this build was very adamant that we do not cut corners Price is not a thing, so we want to make sure we get the best possible quality parts that are out there on the market, and that's why he decided to go with the anti-gravity battery. Now, this nice little mount is made by my good friend Jeremy Cup over at LC Fabrications. You can actually purchase these also on Lowbrow Customs. So this is the battery that we're going to be running. It's going to provide more than enough power to be able to power a headlight and a tail light and an electronic ignition for this Triumph. The thing is, is we've got a small, nice little battery, nice carrying case, so where do we put it? Now, the typical bike builder is gonna just say, all right, where's the easiest place to put it? 
and that would be right up inside here between the fender and the hardtail but I don't want to do what the typical person would do I want to make sure this thing looks nice and clean and all these little attachments are thought through and not just like a second guess and saying ah it's how everybody else does this is how we're going to do it so my idea is to hide it right up underneath the seat like i said this battery we can mount it upside down so that's what we're going to do we're going to come right up in between that oil tank and that seat and hide it up there away from plain sight so we're gonna put a couple bungs up there. We're gonna tack them in place so that we can get this mounted up and we can move on to that exhaust system and finish this thing up. All right, let's get back to work. All right, so our idea is to mount that battery right up in this area, utilizing that cross brace on the hardtail here. Now I've went ahead and took some coped bungs and attach them through the bottom of the battery tray so that we can get the measurements and I've already measured out where the center is and all of that stuff so that we can get this thing right into place and mount it up right there nice and neat and clean but still accessible because an important part about a customer build is that I won't be there to maintain it, so they will need to know how to get in there and work on things so he can get to the battery, get to all that stuff he needs to. So let's go ahead, get that mounted up in there, get it held up. I'm going to have to use a bungee cord or something to hold it into place while I get a couple tack welds on there to hold it in. So let's break out the welder, get that held up, and get it tacked. Now that we got the battery mounted in there where we want, we're gonna move on to the last portion of this video, which is mounting this exhaust. Now, right now, this is just kind of mocked up, held in place by a zip tie. I don't have my front clamps on there. So we need to get the motorcycle into configuration where it's gonna be when it rides. So we need to clamp down the uh, exhaust system. So as we do that, it might move these exhaust pipes around but we wanna get them so they're straight, nice and neat. And then we can place and go ahead and tighten up our mufflers and figure out exactly where we're gonna mount the tabs to the frame. Now, you're saying tabs, what kind of tabs? Well, made up these nice little tabs out of some quarter inch steel and drilled a hole with 5 16 in it because on the back side of these mufflers is a mounting point with a 5 16 bolt. So we're gonna utilize that and weld these tabs onto the frame look at the back make sure that they're nice and straight and everything and we're ready to roll and we're ready to wrap up this video but before we get there i want you guys to take a moment jump down in the comments and let us know maybe what ideas for a color for this motorcycle i know what the customer wants but I wanna know if this was your motorcycle, what color would you do it? So jump down in the comments as we get this exhaust ready to roll. Just like that we have exhaust tacked up so we wrapped up the nice little accoutrement the little detail up there on the hardtail got the battery mounted and finally got the exhaust on so they're at the same length the same height off the ground nice and even nice and perfect well that's wrapping up our video today thank you guys for hanging out if you are new around here jump down and hit that subscribe button if you really like the video hit that thumbs up Turn those notifications on and let everyone know what's going on right here at Weems Motor Co. Peace.